from London, England, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Q covering Discover 2015. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in London for HP E Discover, HP Enterprise, new show here, part of the new split of HP Enterprise. This is theCUBE, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Majod Nair, VP of Products, Converge Data Center Infrastructure. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, Dave. Great to have you on. I'm John, that's Dave over there. <laughs> so we got him <laughs> all right. right. See, all right, we got him laughing already. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah. Product management, big part of your job. You run yeah. the software side, you run, you run all the product management for the Converge, Synergy, and all the other products, yeah. which is the hot set of products yep. here at HP. Um, not the hardware, which is you know, Neil, McDonald, right. and those guys. Software is where the margin is. That's where the money is. <laughs> yeah. so, and also manageability uh -huh. is a big part of it. Give us an update. What's going on in your group? What are you guys working on? What are you guys talking about here at HP Discover? Sure, so I think the big thing we're talking about, as you know, is our, our composable infrastructure. Uh, we announced that at the last Discover in uh, Vegas, as the first proof point was just around you know, software-defined um, operations, and that was really part of one view, opening it up, integrations with ecosystem API, so integrations with folks like Docker, Chef, Puppet, VMware, uh, we just announced Microsoft yesterday. Uh, but that's been the starting point where we believe the first stage of that composable journey starts with the software-defined uh, management and intelligence that OneView brings. So in the show here, we have just talked about the next phase here where we have built the first platform designed ground up for composability, which is HP Synergy. And OneView is the engine and the heart of that in the intelligence now embodied, combining that with the platform advantages that uh, that Synergy brings, right? So it's, it's really bringing, instead of defining infrastructure yeah. traditionally as software, you know, storage, compute, network, yeah. it's an infrastructure building block. And it's, we know, love DevOps, we love infrastructure as code, so it's music to our ears to hear right. those kinds of words coming out of you guys. It's good to see Docker here, yeah. do some deep integration there. What's your role with Docker? They're here at the show. Yeah. Do they fit into this equation? Absolutely, so Docker is one of the core partners, uh, design development partners we've worked with as far as the composable infrastructure. They are one of our ecosystem partners. And if you think about what Docker is trying to do for DevOps, uh, Typically, people are using containers, they deploy it on a public cloud because it's very easy to define the underlying infrastructure. And developers really don't want to think about infrastructure and all the details underneath that. And you know, to do that on-prem was much more complicated. How do I yeah. specify all these different things that infrastructure requires? And that's something that, for Docker, that's the advantage where we have jointly built a Docker machine driver that understands composable in one view, so you can just deploy one-click Docker containers on the infrastructure, and developers don't need to understand the details of the infrastructure. So talk about the um, ground up development yeah. process. I mean, that, that means a whole new view, yeah. no legacy, understanding legacy right. is one thing, but I'm not saying yeah. you're not understanding it, but you, you want to take advantage of the new market trends, cloud native, right? And, and cloud and big data, all those yeah. things that are adding value for developers. What do you guys do, is that part of the Memster? Um, Neil talked about that, it was. Right. You got the machines, not shipping yet, but yeah. this is the beginning of the thinking. Right. As you guys integrate the yeah. design process of software, hardware. Absolutely. Can you share some color into that roadmap? Yeah. Without giving away any, obviously, secrets, but like, just, yeah. just give some color to what does, you know, from the ground up mean? Right, I think part, part of what uh, from the ground up means is that we are, uh, you know, really, figuring out how to not think about these as different elements that you get, you know, the typical layers of management. I got a management platform for compute, I got something for storage, and then I got something for network, and let me put a manager on top of those managers, then I put a director on top of those managers of managers, right? And that's that's the, the layer cake problem we're trying to solve. So part of it is fundamentally rethinking this and thinking of what is an application need? What is a cloud native app or a traditional app need? And it just needs to express those things in terms of the app needs and workload needs rather than compute storage and network. So that's part of ground up, starting to design infrastructure management in terms that applications are expressing their requirements rather than you know, the piece parts of infrastructure. 
As far as roadmap goes, uh, we announced a multi-stage roadmap when we started this journey in, um, in June earlier this year. Uh, stage one, as I said, was the software-defined management. Stage two, synergy, which just we defined, you know, announced at the show. Uh, I think the next few waves here are really taking that software automation that comes on the synergy platforms and the composable uh, platforms to the next level, where automation and orchestration yeah. become much more integrated. So not just infrastructure management, but you know, how do I do the layers about that to fulfill the vision? You know, application-centric infrastructure management rather than the reverse. That should be agnostic, right? Application should, doesn't care. It exactly. Just wants it's like how do services, but <laughs> how does the application actually <laughs> offer infrastructure needs? That's that's really what we're trying to. Sorry. Do. Yeah. No, no, just no, jumping no. in. Yeah, help, help yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's great. You know, I mean, he's got his hands on the uh, the keys to the kingdom. I mean, the product management on the software side is where the value will be generated. Yeah. Not 100%, but that's where the margin will be. Yeah. And certainly in a software-defined world, Absolutely. there's a lot of value there. So I got to ask you, you know, where are your priorities? I mean, as a VP of product management, you're juggling trade-offs every day. Yeah. Certainly Roadmap has drives a lot of the yeah. guiding principles, but right. you know, what are your priorities now? I mean, in the short, medium term, are there certain things in the stack that you want to knock down? Right. Can you share some color on, you know, just globally, generically, sure. what are your priorities? Yeah, so, you know, um, taking that roadmap journey forward, the, the number one priority is how do I make infrastructure simple to consume, right? You know, the public cloud, I think, has defined and shown people what infrastructure simplicity can be. It is done with, you know, armies of developers inside the hyperscale cloud uh, providers our enterprise customers are saying, how can I do that in-house? And that journey is really the priority for us. You know, how do I make consumption of infrastructure much more simple? How do I make management uh, you know, much more of an easy button experience? So uh, that's, that's the journey we're on, right? So HP has a lot of software assets, for example. HP has Helion and its cloud platforms. You know, a much more holistic integration across all of these different Capability, so it's just as you know, app needs X, and you know, allow my workload to move uh, to the best platform, right? And that's the vision that we're on, and that's the journey. So let's talk about sort of the reality of where IT is today, and right. where we want to take them, and how we get there. So yes. you have these layered stacks, yeah. storage, hypervisor, servers, database. You right. have separate teams for each. Yeah. Like you said before, a different management interface. Right for each, and people are not prone to sort of swap out pieces right. of the stack and slot in new ones. Yeah. Essentially, you're trying to reduce or eliminate the dependencies right. on that stack and make it easier to sort of just have that composable infrastructure, Absolutely. as you called yeah. it. Beautiful. What's the friction yeah. to doing that, yeah. and how do we get from point A to point B? Right. And the friction has always been there. We saw it with the first wave of our converged offerings and solutions, uh, and what we see that our customers uh, who understand the journey that they're on, and they're thinking about a, an end state vision, a three to five year roadmap, and uh, you know, I can see a lot of the C-level uh, customers, VP of infrastructures I talk to, are starting to think about that infrastructure journey. When they think of that, uh, they think of the kinds of solutions we're talking about with Composable as, as the journey they need to be. And what we're helping them with is, how do they take the journey without having to do a full rip and replace, right? So, with Converged, you know, we started offering the ability to gradually ease in the Converged offerings rather than having to replace all elements at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is going to happen with Composable. Our customers think about, hey, what's the next new workload? What's the next new refresh cycle? And then with some of the combination of our uh, financing and flexible capacity, we make that friction, you know, which is one of the things is, how do I make this budget flip happen? We take that friction out of the system. The second one is how do I transform my people to so that they're not just siloed operators. And you know, one of our big customers I just talked to said, look, I, I broke down all the silos eventually. I didn't get rid of the people. The people are still there. Now they're cross-trained and they're a lot more productive because they can do a lot more with the ease of the software management that, that OneView brings to the table. And that, you know, so those are the two, couple of the big friction points right. that we have some good ways to, to help our customers so to that. Talk about rip and replace, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm going to just pull out a, a box, right. right? And it's more than that, yes. right? It's just not, it's not just the asset on the books. Right. It's all the processes and skill Absolutely. sets around it. And, and, and so, it's hard to yeah. get people to change. So, are you seeing examples of winning strategies where yeah. you've got a leader who says, okay, like you talked before, the three to five year plan. Right. Uh, 
add some color to that. Yeah. What, what is it, a, a successful example of right. somebody who comes in with real leadership and says, okay, we're going to do this, take that hill. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think the, uh, the big opportunity that customers now see is you know, how do I eliminate operational complexity? Uh, you know, this whole concept of the idea economy is a big change driver. You know, IT is becoming the core of the business rather than just supporting business process. And all, you know, a lot of startups and companies who have disrupted uh, traditional industry have actually taken advantage of technology to do that. That's become the big you know, driver for change inside most of the large enterprise customers saying, why can we not leverage technology to get much more analytics, much more intelligence, targeted offers for our users? To do that, CIOs need to have a technology roadmap, right? And those are the ones we see the most success with, where we're just saying, I have decided I'm going to become a, you know, an enabler of the business, the contributor to the business, beyond just supporting business processes. So that's at the highest level. And the next click down is, okay, now you pick your couple of net, you know, first success stories. And every company that I know of, and I personally you know, ran a, a big portfolio that my own developers wanted to go to the cloud. And so you go to your IT department saying, can you offer these things, right? So those kind of examples, you know, I'm trying to do the next generation application. I'm a customer who's trying to do a mobile storefront pick those examples as the places to actually to start deploying your new platforms. And over time, you know, we have built a platform that can do it both old and new, and so that makes it easier for people to do the transition. And, and we haven't talked about it explicitly, but automation. Right. Right, and a lot of times, you know, the goal is to automate so you can scale right. your business, but IT oftentimes is not aligning right. with that goal. They're afraid of automation. Right. They love to turn the knobs. And right. What are you seeing in terms of the automation holy grail? Sure, I think, I think it's uh, more about this. There's fear of automation because a lot of automation is automation without intelligence. Huh. So there's, you know, if you automate a bunch of things that are not meant to work together, you are going to have breakage. And IT knows the pain of something breaking. So I don't think it is the fear of automation as such, but it's the lack of you know, intelligence of that automation. And I think that is one of the things where we're saying, look, we understand the underlying infrastructure. We're going to make it much more easier. You automate on the basis of what the applications need, and that automation understands the underlying infrastructure, takes care of it. Talk about the team internally. What's yeah. the vibe at like at H the new HP? Yeah. Um, what kind of tech are you guys working on, you all have big screens, what's the developer environment like? Sure. Share for the folks out there a peek into the new HP. A uh, lot of excitement, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the split in some ways was uh, exciting in terms of a lot of celebration, but as far as the working teams goes, it was very seamless, so very well done. You know, you don't want to see uh, any friction for the developers. Uh, we, you know, there was some moving around, some buildings and all that. Um, we have a very open development environment, at least you know, our group uh, out in Palo Alto. Uh, you know, we get to see the Stanford Clock Tower on one end. And, uh, Are you on ha Hanover Street? Uh, yep, on Hanover Street. So it's uh, you know, the new building that you see in the ads now. Uh, and, uh, Who got the HP Labs uh, building up on the hill? The uh, Bill and I Dave's think the labs are still was. there, um, but uh, HP Inc. is part of that, and then I think some You know we did a CUBE event, a CUBE uh, at, at broadcast. Labs. Yeah, that's, that's right there. a beautiful location. They got a lot of bandwidth right there. there. Yeah. <laughs> 150 yeah. meg up. Yeah. 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 Anytime no you guys shortage. want to do a CUBE event at HP Labs, we're, we'll be happy to come back. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> absolutely. You know, great campus, open environment. Yeah. You know, we sit in pods where you know, me and my peers share a pod of four and you know, low wall cubes. I love it, you know. Yeah. That encourages great. interaction. Yep, lots great of place to work. Best, you get the latest of hardware too to play around with, right? Yeah. So I walk around with my new laptop, and the customer says, "I want that." He goes, yeah. you know. <laughs> Big screen, double yeah. screen. Manoj, give us the final word here on the show. What's going on here? What are some of the conversations you've yeah. been involved in with customers, and what are you going to take back to the ranch uh, in Palo Alto and share with the folks back home? Absolutely. The customer vibe is like, look, this is different. This is a different conversation that we're not hearing from any of the other vendors and in infrastructure. You're talking about applications, you're talking about you know, how to make things simple, and it's a paradigm shift. Now I'm pretty sure that a lot of competitors are going to come out saying, oh sure, we do that too. I think we have defined it in a very clear way. Our customers are educated enough, I believe, that um, you know, they're going to be able to see the difference. Um, the biggest takeaway is you know, accelerate the journey. Right? Get to that end goal of 
how do I make it easier for applications to consume infrastructure, you know, make the infrastructure intelligent, and help IT in becoming a business partner. So you guys eating your own dog food or drinking your own champagne? Absolutely. Give you an example. We're drinking our own champagne. <laughs> uh, during the separation, uh, you know, we had to spin up about 200 times more infrastructure than a typical here because of you know, multiple systems, transitions. Uh, our IT guys did a, a very cool thing. You know, they actually uh, you know, put some GoPros on their heads and uh, showed how to go all the way from a rack uh, that is boxed up to deploying applications and developing applications against uh, yeah. the new infrastructure in like you know, a matter of hours, right? So rack to yeah. actual development, matter of hours before launch they were done. And that's, you know, so the RIT um, uh, partners are actually yeah. been testing this out for the last few months and using yeah. integrations like Docker to build some of the new apps that we have been, we yeah. as, as employees of HP get to use on our day to day, you know, on our mobile apps and all that. And, and that's being dialed on. You know, a lot of people don't know how awesome HP IT is. I mean, even going back when yeah. I worked there in the 90s, first intranet, right. first, one of the first domains right. on the internet, hp.com. Yeah. You know, when Mosaic browser yeah. came out, just everything that they did, very, really, yeah. really state of the art Fantastic stuff. Fantastic development yeah. partner, you know, so yeah. that is great to have, you know, such a. Uh, and it's still know. like that today. Yeah, absolutely. It's, okay. uh, it's, it's better, if any, right? It's. Uh, well, we got to talk to get some uh, the CIO on, get them on the Cube next time. So, absolutely. HPIT, you're invited on the Cube next time. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate right. sharing the insights on the product management vision. Absolutely. Software is, is, is the competitive advantage, obviously, yeah. big data. A lot, of, a lot of big data coming up here in theCUBE. Next sec, couple, yeah. few segments, you'll see a lot of big data. Stay tuned, we got more coming here, live in London, after this short break. Remember, we have podcasts, and go to siliconangle.tv, where we have the guest of the week, gets its own podcast, and of course, every Wednesday is Women Wednesday. We highlight the, the feature, A Woman in Tech. Go to siliconangle.tv, and of course, go to crowdchat.net slash HPE Discover, that's our engagement container. And of course, crowdpages.co slash HPE Discover, that is the new social CMS with a new persona-based search engine influencer ranking that we're rolling out today. Check it out, this is theCUBE, we'll be right back with more after this short break.